I feel like we are teacher online. <laughs> like we're online teachers? Uh-huh. Uh, it does feel a little like that. Students, pay attention! Yep. You! <laughs> you! <laughs> Hola, farmsteaders! Hola! We are Mac. And Jose. And we are the Youper farmsteaders. Yes, we are. Jose, here we find ourselves another day behind this table again okay. for more wow. planning. Well, I think we are working from here. Every winter, we're going to be working from here. <laughs> okay, so today we are going to talk to you about something that is more difficult than I thought it would be, and that is doing your seed order. Oh, yeah. And the things you need to think about when you're planning your seed order <laughs> because you can't when you're doing a market garden and you're planning to take things to farmers markets and CSAs you can't just go to the store and pick up a packet or two of seeds only if if you have plan for a um, tiny garden <laughs> yes if you have a tiny garden that's fine but we are planning on doing about 40 100 foot beds yeah and you can't just pick up a packet of seeds. For example, last night I was doing research on lettuce mm -hmm. and you need two and a half ounces wow. of seed to do one garden bed. If we're doing 16 beds throughout the year of lettuce mm -hmm. so that we have lettuce mix at every single farmer's market, let's say, we could be doing as many as two and a half pounds of seed, lettuce seed. So there's a lot to think about. Yeah. <laughs> so this video is going to be the six things that you need to think about when doing your when planning your seed order for your gardens. Okay. Sound good. Here we go. Number one. Number one is to do your garden plan. <laughs> we just made a video on the six things you need to consider when doing your garden plan. Mm -hmm. No, here. here. Oh. You're always confused. <laughs> You need to know your garden plan before you ever do your seed yep. orders or you're going to order too many seeds or you're going to order not enough seeds. So Jose and I are currently working on our garden plan so that we can do our seed order. Yep, this is because, the next uh, step. Yes, because that is the step after you do your garden plan. Mm -hmm. What is the number two? Number two is to know the length of your season and the average temperature that you will have in your area for the summer. So for example, when you and I were in Hawaii, we really had an open palette. We could plant year round. Yeah. Now certain things only ripened during certain seasons, but really things like your greens, you could plant year round. The only thing you might have to worry about is it might get too warm during part of the year yeah. for some things. Here, though, is very different. <laughs> we have a, a last frost on May 28th and our first frost on September 29th, which only gives us about 120 days of growing. The other thing is that it doesn't get very warm here. We will have some warm days of 80 or 90 degrees, but those are very rare. On average, during the heat of the summer, we'll get up to around 75 degrees, and that is not very warm. So when you're thinking about what types of seeds you can plant, you need to know how long your growing season is mm -hmm. and how warm it gets. Because certain things just aren't gonna grow in certain areas. No. For example, some of the long season pumpkins, we don't have a chance of being <laughs> able to grow them here. Or some of the melons, we mm -hmm. won't be able to grow here. Because those melons take a long time to produce and a lot of times they take a certain heat level in order to set fruit. So you might be able to plant them and the plants will grow, but you're not going to get any fruit. No. Uh, uh, no. no, we're not answering. Okay. We've decided not to answer the telephone when we're working. So if no. that's you calling right now, sorry, you're just going to have to wait till after we record this video. So number two is to understand the length of your growing season and how warm it's going to get during the growing season. Nice. Okay, what is the next thing? The next thing is to know which fruits and vegetables you want to be growing on your farm. Oh. 
And the advice we have gotten as new growers is to keep it simple. Isn't KISS, K-I-S-S, keep it simple, stupid? That's not nice though. Uh, so just keep it simple. You want to grow your basic crops and basic varieties your first year or two while you're learning about your growing area yeah. and while you're learning about growing crops in general. Yeah, for us, we are uh, start um, simple. Yeah, we're <laughs> going to try to, well, Jose wants to start simple, but I tend to get a little out of control. So I'm going to need Jose to reel me in when I'm getting crazy with the garden. Exactly. No. Okay. <laughs> okay, so number three is to get clear on which fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. you want to grow. Okay. Uh, what is the number four? Number four is to start looking at the varieties. Okay. Yes. And this is where things get crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have never seen so many varieties of plants in my life. Yeah, because when you go to the marketplace, you only see ah, tomatoes, um, potatoes, everything looks similar. <laughs> yeah. But when you are um, playing, playing a garden. When you're planting and you're looking into this very thick seed catalog. Yeah. There are hundreds of varieties of tomatoes and the amount of lettuce. It just is overwhelming. There are so many things to grow and so many different varieties that you really need to narrow down because that can be overwhelming. You need to narrow down which varieties you're going to grow. And so there's some things to consider to know your growing zone because some things just aren't going to grow in your growing zone. Then are you wanting to grow plants that have disease resistance? Mm -hmm. Because you can grow heirlooms, you can grow crops that have been bred to be disease resistant, and for a lot of things you probably want to go with disease, resist disease resistance. Are you going to grow organic seeds or not organic <laughs> seeds? I mean, there's so many things to think about and so many different options. Another thing that's happening now is they are putting seeds in like a case, a casing or a coating, so that seed is easier to put through your seeder. Mm -hmm. Because when you're out there with your seeder, if you can get a more uniform seeding in the ground and you don't have to go through and thin your crops, your life is gonna be a lot easier. So do you wanna order the coated seeds or the not coated seeds? <laughs> really, there are so many things to think about. Yes. So number four is to decide which varieties you're going to order of the different crops. Okay, now what is the number five? Number five is how many seeds do you need to order? You need to figure <laughs> out how many seeds per bed, Yeah. which is crazy to me how many seeds we need to be ordering. I thought seeds would be one of the cheap parts of our budget, that it wouldn't cost us that much. Because usually I only go buy a little packet at the <laughs> store, you know, $2, $3. But when you're talking about ordering seeds by the thousands or seeds by the pound, it gets pretty expensive pretty fast. Yep. So you need to look at the spacing in the garden beds, what size are your garden beds, and how many seeds you need to plant there. Also, you need to think about if you plant a thousand seeds, what percentage of those are going to actually sprout and produce a quality plant for you? Yep. So it may only be 80%, which means then you need to be planting more than you thought you would need to plant. Yep. One of the interesting things, though, is in the Johnny's seed book here, it actually has in the front, let me get to it, <laughs> it has a little chart on how many seeds you would need per 100 foot bed. Or if you're planting by the acre, it also tells you on here how much you can plant by the acre, yeah. but I don't think we'll be planting anything by the acre no. anytime soon. That's just way too much for us little first year farmers. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, this is a good starting place. I also looked at his book. Mm -hmm. He's got a great section in here that talks about each of the different crops and what he does for his crop spacing. Very helpful. It's very helpful. So you can look at his crop spacing and then divide his crop spacing by the number of inches in your bed and the amount of space and you can figure out how many seeds you're going to need. So there's a lot of math that goes into this part. 
Jose, how are your math skills? <sighs> Thank goodness every computer and every telephone comes with a calculator. I think in the last few days I've been calculating <laughs> and trying to figure out so many different uh, amounts of seeds we need to be ordering. Yeah, mm -hmm. so many things. Mm -hmm. So that was number five. Number five is to figure out how many seeds you're going to need per bed. What is the last thing? The last thing is to decide where you're going to order from. Mm -hmm. There are seed companies all over the country and all <laughs> of them have different things that they offer, different things they specialize in. We ordered our potatoes from the main potato lady. Mm -hmm. We're going to order the bulk of our seeds from Johnny Seeds, that these guys right here. Uh, we also have this Burgess seed guide, and I guarantee once you start getting catalogs, it's going to be a never ending no. <laughs> supply of potential seeds at your house. Yeah. There are so many out there. One of the things though that you should probably consider is to look into whether or not you have a local company oh, yeah. that provides mm -hmm. seeds. Because what a local company is going to give you that one of these larger national companies is not going to be able to give you is what does really well in your area, yep. what variety will really thrive in your area. If you need to do any soil amendments mm -hmm. to make sure that that crop does well in your area. So we're big on local. We will, obviously, if we grow local, we want people to buy local, then it would also be important to take a look to see if you can find a nursery close to you that does bulk seeds that you can order from. Yep. Well, Jose, now that we have made this video, we need to go and place our seed order. So this video will be followed by another video that's going to talk exactly about what we ordered. Mm -hmm. So maybe we will even be unboxing seeds by that time. One of the things you want to think about though, especially for this year that Jose and I did not consider, is we're probably ordering later than we should have. Oh yeah. And the seed companies are actually out of a lot of the seeds. Now I don't want to worry you. I just want you to think about that you should probably get on the ball. I thought for sure if we ordered before the end of January, it wouldn't be a problem. But we are finding a lot of things are already sold out. Literally, we just got the catalogs a couple of weeks ago. We've done some planning <laughs> and gotten ready to order the seeds and they're already out of yeah. stuff. So we are going to have to do some replanning to make sure we are getting all the seeds we need for the growing season. Yeah, you had put attention. Yeah, you do have to pay attention. <laughs> All right, again, we are market gardeners up here in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. If you are into farmsteading or homesteading or self-sufficiency, or you just love the Upper Peninsula, we hope you'll subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up. Again, we are Mac and, Jose. and we are the Uper Farmsteaders. Yeah, thank you for watching.